Plaintiff Kathy Gregory drained her savings to loan her daughter money for a new car. But after repaying just some of the money, her daughter ghosted her calls and visits. Defendant Charla Green says her mom practically forced her to take the money and never said a thing about it being a loan. Mom, you're suing your daughter. Yes, that's correct, Judge. Why? So I'm suing her for a $5,000 loan that I loaned her. Yeah, and, and why did you loan her the money? She started a new job. Yes. And she didn't have reliable transportation to get to work. Yes. So I took it on myself. I was taking her to work early in the morning, about 8 o'clock, and then I also would pick her up late in the evening at 10 o'clock wow. p.m. at night. And I what, did what that. What kind of job was that? Um, I was a dispatcher. Oh, okay. Uh, for and what were you, what were your hours? Well, when I originally first started, um, my hours were like 5:45 in the morning uh, to about 3 p.m. And then um, I would work overtime um, once I got out of training from like 8 a.m. Yeah. Through like 10 p.m. at night. Good work ethic. <laughs> yes. So I was taking her to work, and this went on for about two months. And then after that, she came to me and she said, Mom, uh, could you give me a loan? What car did you finally get? I ended up getting a 2017 Kia Optima. How uh, much did you pay for the Kia? The Kia uh, was about $17,000 finance. It but was, I needed yeah. uh, $7,000 down because I, ha I was at a new job. That was the lowest down payment that I needed to get the car. I gave her $7,000, and I went into my savings and gave it to her, and it just about drained me. But we didn't have a written agreement. What I did tell her is it was a verbal agreement of, uh, that how she had to pay the money back. She got paid bi-weekly, so I told her to give me $300 every time she got paid. But if she was able to give more, to give me more. So she paid me faithfully, I said about two months or whatever, all together totaling of $2,000. Then after that, she just, all of a sudden, she just stopped paying me. I would call her, she didn't respond to my phone calls. She would, I would even send her a text, she didn't answer my text. I would even go further to leave her a message on her work phone, and she did not answer. I even went to her house, judge, and knocked on her door. <laughs> Charla, Charla, answer the door. I didn't hear anything. I could hear loud music, but she refused to come to the door. And I think that's a crying shame when I lent, you know, her my $7,000. Your Honor, I am on a fixed income. I get my money monthly. And then I don't really go on Facebook that much. But when I do go on, the first thing I see is her on social media. And this picture right here, Your Honor, this is a picture of her taking a trip in Las Vegas on this dune buggy. But she said that she can't pay me my money, and that's not cheap to go to Las Vegas. And then when I pull it up again, Your Honor, she done took another trip. This is a, a picture of her in Colorado. She went ice skating yeah. again with another friend. And she's telling me that she can't pay this money. All right, let me, you know, sounds pretty persuasive, doesn't it? I mean, where the lie resides is that I did not ask her for the $7,000. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I did not ask for the $7,000. Yes, I did, okay. Your Honor. She's lying. What? I oh, asked oh, her. Oh, oh, oh. That's not true. Yes, what happened yes. was when she was taking me back and forth to work, and then with, my, with her grandchildren, my two children, smaller children, um, she didn't want to see us out in the cold because, you know, sure. September, October, it's getting cold. You know, yeah. it gets cold in Wisconsin. So she was like, well, you know, if you need a car, I will go ahead and give you the money. And then I said, you know, I told my mom, I said, no, you know, I'll just kind of figure a way. She was like, no, no. No, I'll... I did give you, the, I loaned you the money. No, yes, I did. No, that's sure. what she I offered. Know. And I said, okay, no, mom, no. I don't really have the, the means to pay you back. And she said, oh, that's fine. You know. You I'm told her you don't have the means to pay her back. I did. The only reason why I was paying her back is to kind of get her off my back. So as time went on, you know, I paid her that initial 2000 You know, everything was fine. I was taking her to get her lottery tickets, bring the grandchildren Okay, why over. you bring that up about the lottery tickets? That's my own money. I, I get okay, that money from the mom, so I can go. I it's can the go, same thing when I went I on vacation. I spent my right, own right, money. Right, get right, lottery okay. tickets. Okay, let her, this is let her, her time. Let her okay. It's the same thing when she posts uh, my pictures. I spent my own money. That wasn't her money of seven thousand dollars. Okay. That was well, my money. Once you got the seven thousand, putting aside the decision right now whether it's a loan or a gift, that seven thousand was put into the same pool of money as your other money, and then you decided how to spend it. At some point, you're not just a child; you're now an adult with That's your own right, responsibilities. Jill. She's sixty years old on fixed income. 
that's pretty tough on your mom. Of course you would want to pay her back. Even if she hadn't said, you got to pay me back, a loving daughter would say, Mom, 7000 is a lot of money for you to be just giving and not paying back. I understand that there was no written contract in this. Even if she gives it to you, the re response would be, look, I'll pay you back. That's awfully nice of yes. you. I do need a car now. This is going to be very helpful. I'll pay you back when I can. And you did pay 2000 and that just tells me that, one, you're a good person, but two, it also tells me that you recognized, morally at least, that this was a loan. You know, isn't that what mom's supposed to do? You not know, when, when you get children gone. are in Wait, the she's bind. asking me, not you. Yes, you are. You know, are. when children are in the bind, isn't that what parents are supposed to do? Yeah. I know when my children get older and they ask me for something, you know, I'm going to, you know, obviously do what's best for my children if they need assistance. Exactly. I totally get that. And as a parent or grandparent, I do the same thing. One day, may it be 30 years from now, she's going to maybe have to be in a home. It's not unusual for parents, elderly parents, to look to their kids for some help when they're not able to provide for themselves anymore. The, the relationships get reversed. Guys, you love each other. Okay, yes, I so do love no, her. I know you. But you I do. love my money more, and I need no, my seven thousand dollars. No, 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 yes. no, 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 no. Don't not. Yes, I, I don't need say my... that. I'm not saying you're not entitled to get the money back. Yeah, I love her, but, but you don't love your money more no, than I you love, love your No, I don't love her, but I do need my money. I get that. I and, get that. And I your get honor, that's what I've been saying. And your honor, she's the I don't ever one. want to hear that you love okay. money more and than your kids. Stop interrupting the judgment. I'm sorry, but your honor, I have two other children, and she's the only one that always be in need of something all the time. Oh no, that's a lie. Let's not say things here today that you will regret when the trial is over. Because as long as you both are alive, you're going to want to be able to love each other and not have said something that you're later going to regret. You are entitled to be repaid for the money that you gave. But once you admit that it's a loan, then the law is pretty clear. So I find for the plaintiff in the sum of $5,000. Thank you. And when you write, you know you write. See, God don't like ugly. Oh, and I got now, is, now is the time, I just finished saying, don't say anything to ruin that relationship. I'm not, I feel it's loving. loving. Yes. yes, and you know what a loving mother would say? If you don't need all the money back right away, what, work something out with your daughter. Yes, I will. Okay, but work something out with her. Don't well, say, I told you so. Well, no, she know I love <laughs> exactly her. And I, she know I love her and I always love well, her. Well, show it then. I believe that you do, but... You know, this is just the case. Okay. But you two, that's a life. You're right, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. I will get. I will do a contract next time, and I will loan her money. I will loan her money again, but not that much at one time. I'm glad that you know it's resolved now, and we can you know start repairing our relationship. Plaintiff Diane Lepec Farber claims her handyman tried to hustle her with a poorly done paint job. She's suing him for $2,000. Christopher Wilson claims Diane stuck him with a bad check, and now she's trying to bounce him off the job. He's countersuing for $900 for materials and fees. Diane, you are suing Christopher because you're unhappy with the paint job. Correct. I moved back to New Jersey yep. and bought a condo. Yes. And the condo was like 35 years old and yeah. had never had any updating. So I was looking for someone to do some work. Yes. And there's a website called Next Door Neighbor. Okay. And there was an advertisement for the handyman. And so I called and he came and I told him what I wanted done. And he went out into the car with Christopher and discussed whether or not they could do the job. And he came back in and said, yes, they could take care of it and they would do it for $2,000, and I would buy the supplies. You had a contract with the contractor. He told me that Christopher and him were partners. But he was the contractor? Yes. Okay, and what, he turned around and hired Christopher to do the painting? He told me that Christopher was his partner, and, and Christopher did the painting and the electric work. I gave him a check for over $800 in the beginning, and then as he gave me the receipts, which I did not look at, um, I just paid them because I How much did you wind up paying? Total 
about $1,200. There were two separate arrangements. The first was with the contractor the for $2,000. And then separately, you made a deal with Christopher that he would purchase supplies and you would reimburse him for the supplies for the painting, right? Okay, so I'm not talking about Christopher right now. I'm talking about the original $2,000, which you were apparently to have paid within three days, from day one, $1,000, day two, $500, day three, $500. I paid a lot of it in cash, so I don't really have receipts for it. She pays the contractor all his money cash. And you know, I handed the receipts, and just a little small $100 bill for electrical work that I did. And I'm like, hey, what? here's my, you know, here's, here's my receipts. I, I'm looking for my refund from all the money that I put out. And she writes me a check. I, I deposit this check into my bank. The weekend goes by. And on Monday, I'm like, where's the money? Like, I, I go to the supermarket, I'm out shopping with my kids, thinking I got a ton of money and, you know, I got my $900. Yeah. My account's overdrawn and I'm like, what in the world is going on? I'm upset, my kid's upset, so I'm contacting the, the contractor and I'm like, hey man, you know, her check bounced. And I'm trying to figure out how it is the plaintiff is suing me and she never paid me. She paid her contractor $2,000. Okay, well, that part does seem to be true. Here is the canceled check and uh, I don't I have... never got paid. What are you suing for? You're suing for? For the $2,000 because I had to hire someone else to come in and complete what they did not do correctly. So you weren't happy with the job that they were doing? No, and I sent pictures in. Okay. Is, is the job finished? No. Well, they thought it was finished because they didn't come back. That is where the um, wall meets the, the ceiling yeah. and how it's not completely painted. That's... Uh, where the refrigerator was, they never moved it to paint back there. You're suing for $2,000 because you hired a new contractor. That's not, part of it. Okay, but you didn't finish paying them, and your argument is I didn't pay them because the job wasn't satisfactory. They never finished the job. They were supposed to come back to see what needed to be completed. But, and I wrote them a $900 check yeah. thinking they would do that. Yes. But when I looked at the job, I was instructed that I should stop payment. Who instructed on you? A contractor that I know. Well, maybe that's why they didn't finish the job. No, they were supposed to come back in two weeks to look at what wasn't completed so that they could complete it. Right. But they never but did. Because you stopped payment on the check. But I would have issued a new check, and I told them that. Told the who? Okay, let's hear from you. Your Honor. I was initially hired by the handyman yeah. to come help the plaintiff. We were originally there just to pressure wash her patio. Uh, when we got there, she had all these other jobs she wanted done, as far as painting and removing wallpaper and stuff like that. I was hired to help, Your Honor. There was two other people that the contractor had hired to help us as well. My main job, I was doing a lot of painting. I was running back to the, for the store to pick up like materials and stuff like that. And I also offered the plaintiff, uh, Diane here, I offered her like, hey, I'll pay for the materials, and you know, you reimburse me once I'm done paying for all of the materials. That was it. Uh, you know, we got 75% complete <clears throat> on the job. All the, the rooms that she wanted was done. Your contract is with the, the contractor, and that is who you should be suing. Then it's between them, but to sue him when your arrangement, except for the materials, was with the contractor, it's the contractor who is responsible. They were a team, Your Honor. Your contract was with him, not with, quote, a team. A contractor is responsible because the contractor is the one that hires. Uh, you take care of the painting. You do the windows. You do that. That's what contractors do. You don't go around suing every single person that the contractor may particularly hire. First of all, Your Honor, I want to say I respect my elders. I am very respect. That's how I was raised. But I believe Ms. Falver and her handyman were actually having sexual relations. And that's why she's suing what? me, Your Honor, and not the person that she paid $2,000. Oh, whoa. my God. And this, this is actually, I, I have a, a no, couple things. The, what, the, you come into court, oh you say, God. what is the possible relevance? You, this is why 
She's suing me, Your Honor, and not the person. Why would she sue you? Let's say, and I have no reason to believe that's true, but why would she want to sue you because of that? Your Honor, because she has feelings for, for her handyman. Oh, my God. Yeah, but why is she suing you? Why are you suing me and not the, the person who did the work, not the person that you paid? She's suing you because she may be mistaken, but she believes the guy who does the painting, if the painting's no good, that's the guy you go after. That's, a lot of people would think that's the right thing to do. You, if, if you're not the right person, it's because there's a technicality in the law which says that you go after the contract and the contract is responsible for all the subcontractors. And I do see a contract between you and the contractor that he would be responsible. So I know it's difficult maybe to find him, but that's where your suit belongs. Your suit, the counter suit, is just for the $900 that was on a check of stop payment. Yes, Your Honor. That relationship is between you two, and you agreed in that contract to reimburse him for what he purchased. The check you stopped is $900, which was partial payment for the materials. But, well, that's all he's suing you back for is $900. So on your suit, I'm saying you have to sue the right party. He's not the right party. On your counter suit, the expensive may have been more than $900 that was put out, but you only sued for $900, so I grant a uh, verdict for you for $900. Thank you. Your suit against Chris is the wrong person to sue, so therefore I dismiss it. And, you know, I feel that this was the right decision. You know, um, she had wrote me a bad check, and she had owed me this money that I had put out, and I'm just glad that, you know, I was able to get what she owed me back. The fact that he referenced that I would have a relationship with that handyman is just unbelievable. The guy was younger, not my type, and made me angry. So no, and I just really upset that he even said that in court.